Mm. Well, get that back here. Mm. I think I see it. I think I can see it. What are you seeing in there, Larry? The end of the political ads. Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here. We're now back to reviewing Studio 86 toys for this month. Especially since it's taken us a while to find a few of these guys, so... Hopefully everybody will appreciate getting to see some of them. First up, we have a rather classic and unforgettable character. We have Perceptor. And of course here, Perceptor does come with his own unique background. It's nice to see a different backdrop from the 86 line. And it's depicting Autobot City in the middle of the battle. Which of course that was Perceptor's biggest scene in the movie, aside from uh, the long-winded explanation of trying to find the planet of junk. This basically gave the opening scene where Perceptor, in his long-winded way of speaking, pretty much informed Ultra Magnus and company that they were horrendously outnumbered. Of course, what's nice about having this as the backdrop is that pretty much everybody that was involved in that scene is available either from the War for Cybertron line, or they've actually been made into the 86 line. Because we do have RC as the 86 figure. Or you can use the more common Earthrise or Kingdom figure for that. Springer was from the Siege line. We also got 86 Blur to go with it. And you can use Siege or Kingdom Ultra Magnus. Although Kingdom would be more accurate, since the alternate mode is more accurate to how he was in the cartoon. But since you'd be in robot mode for the display, I guess it wouldn't matter too much. But either way, like I said, nice to see a different backdrop. We don't get too many of those in the 86 line. Yeah, of course... Since he came as, since Perceptor was a Generation 1 figure, we should show him off with his 1985 original toy. And as you can see, the original is just a shade bigger than the modern one. But of course, the original was also notorious for having quite a lot of loose parts on him. Since, I mean, not only did you have the the guns, and of course this is a missile launcher, so you had extra missiles with it, but the dials right here on the side of his arms, those dials there, those could come off. And the microscope piece itself was very, very easy to remove on him. Now, of course, it could be depicted as being on either shoulder. Depending on how you wanted it to be. I've set him up more so that he would match the studio figure a little bit. Now, of course, Perceptor had the unique role among the Autobots as he was a scientist. Something that was very rarely seen. And of course with his alternate mode being a microscope, it does work for him. Of course that was also part of the issue amongst Cybertronians in their early days of their war. Was the fact that their profession had to match their alternate modes. So Perceptor kind of fits that bill either way as he is rather intelligent, and his microscope alternate mode does suit his need for science. 
However, many others, like Jetfire, also specialize in scientific research, but he was going to be denied the ability to do that since his alternate mode is that of an airplane. So it was meaning he had to be forced to be a seeker instead of pursuing his true passion for science. Rather interesting, some of the backstory behind all this. Nice that we've had almost 40 years to develop it. <laughs> okay, with a lot of the backstory out of the way, let's take a look at Perceptor's accessories. And he only has one. And that is, of course, his red gun. As far as guns go, it's pretty okay. I mean, nothing special, but of course we do have something here. It looks like an ammunition magazine right there in the front. That's kind of neat. I'm going to reach over here off camera. This does bear some resemblance to the original gun. Let's see. Right above here, that's the original gun. As you can see, it does have the same basic shape. It's just lacking the small light or sight that was on the top of the gun. So, overall, not too bad. But now, of course, let's take a look at Perceptor's articulation. And as you can imagine, with him being a studio figure, he should have a fair amount. His head can be turned from side to side. You will end up knocking the scope out of the way a little bit. His arm can be raised up about so far. And the arms do rotate all the way at the shoulder. You'll just have to move the left one out a bit so it avoids hitting the scope. His arms do bend at the elbow 90 degrees, and they do feature a swivel at the bicep, so he does have G.I. Joe style battle grip. Perceptor can be twisted at the hips, so he does have some dance moves, contrary to his nature. You can spread his legs apart into a full splits. His legs do have a thigh cut, so you can adjust them at the thigh. You can raise his legs up at the hip, roughly about 90 degrees, and they can bend at the knee greater than 90 degrees. So you can get some action poses going there with him, which might come in handy if more of the Decepticon cassettes get released. I have heard room, I have seen on the lineup that Rumble will be released. And in his uh, cartoon accurate colors too, so that'll be something to look forward to later this year into next year. Now all we need is a sound wave to go with it. Okay, to transform Perceptor, it's a rather simple process. We start by turning his head so it looks behind him. And then we're going to fold the head down into his back. Just exactly like that. Now we'll come here to his arms and you're going to pull them free at the shoulder. So that they fold downwards. Like so. And then, of course, we're going to come here to the scope. The scope should fold outward a little bit, like so. And then you can raise it at the shoulder and adjust it so it's centered right above his head, just like that. And then this other piece on the opposite shoulder, you will fold up. And it should connect somewhat loosely and somewhat snugly into the hole here at the side. This will help hold everything in place right there. <laughs> I 
Then we're going to take the arms, we're going to stretch them outwards a bit like so. And then rotate them at the elbow so you've got the knobs facing towards his legs like that. Then we're going to fold his hands inside. <laughs> I meant instead of rotating the elbow, instead of rotating at the elbow, you gotta rotate it at the shoulder. My mistake. Because you're going to fold things outward at the shoulder joint so that his arms go up just like that. And they should easily and snugly fit right in here, right next to his body. Then we turn him around to face us, bring his legs up at the hip, so he's kind of in a basic seated position. Fold down his feet. Then we're going to open his legs up into the full splits. And then you will bend them here at just above the kneecap. They should bend inwards. Like that. Then we just fold down the chest panel and then you can adjust the scope up. And then there you have it. That is Perceptor's alternate mode of a microscope. Of course, right next to it is the Generation 1 version. Now the interesting thing about this is that the Generation 1 version did double as a real microscope. It could magnify up to about 10 times. This one, however, since it has no real means of adjustment to it, it is pretty much worthless as a microscope. Which, unfortunately, I think for Hasbro is kind of a missed opportunity, especially with the constant push of the STEM programs in schools nowadays. I think they should have made Perceptor, once again, be a working microscope. But then again, since this one is designed to be more of an adult collectible than a child's toy, I guess it can be a get a pass for that. But hopefully Hasbro will take note of it and make a future version able to be used as a real microscope. Now, of course, one other feature is that you could, if you wanted to, to store the gun so you don't lose it, you could attach it to either of Perceptor's shoulders here. Since there is a hole there for it, and then there you go, the gun is safely stored so that you won't lose it. Looks kind of silly there, but hey. Now, for those of you that were around in the Generation 1 era, you'll remember that Perceptor did have a third mode. So yes, the fun does continue, folks. And they did incorporate it into this toy as well. We do get the third alternate mode. To do that, all you simply have to do is we hold the, hold the legs down and fold the body down a bit. And then we just swing the legs around to the front. You'll notice in here in the leg there's a little circular hole. Well that connects to these little posts <clears throat> underneath the arms. So just bring it down. Well actually we're talking about lining up with this hole closer to the feet. Not the big circular hole. Excuse me. 
But you get those snugly secured in. And then, there you go, you have an artillery cannon. And of course on this side you got an open hole on the side there, which is once again perfect for storing the gun. And of course, in the Generation 1 era, that was how it looked. It didn't have a spot to connect the body to it, so it kind of made it a little more adjustable. But as you can imagine, years of play wear would also mean that it would degrade and get loose. So having a firm connection point on the modern one does suit it best. So now we get to my thoughts. Well, Perceptor was always one of the interesting characters. Maybe not to everybody, but with him, with him having a rather unique alternate mode and the fact that his role among the Autobots also worked well with the microscope, it did seem like a good match made in heaven. And now we finally have one that's a little more accurate to the cartoon appearance. And all in all, it does work out very, very well. I am pleased with how it turned out. And I will also admit that I wasn't expecting to get this mode in it as well. So for somebody to take the time to incorporate it into the toy, that was a nice feature. So, all in all, it does open up the possibilities for how you wish to display this figure. Let's just hope that future versions of Perceptor will bring back the one major feature that the original had that is a long forgotten byproduct of it, but probably in this modern day could stand to be resurfaced and revisited again. And that's my review of the Studio 86 version of Perceptor. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Please do remember that if you like the content on this channel, please do like, share, comment, and subscribe. This is Sparkster1701 saying I will catch you all later.